Hello everyone. My name is Tiffany. I'm the Tipsy Artist. We are going live today to teach you this super adorable painting. So I have a version of this that's a little bit smaller for my painting kit. Easy to ship, easy to do for beginners. And then we also have a traceable for it too. Um, so here is a big version and then I've got everything set up in front of me so we are about to switch gears here and switch over to another camera and then get started here all right so I'm gonna go ahead and let's go ahead and switch this better work <laughs> here we go all right so now we're gonna go ahead and get started on this small version here and I'm going to get some things moved out of the way so we can start to paint. All right. Well, I've got my palette here nearby and paint kit nearby. So I'll move this here in a little bit. But let's go ahead and I've got a lot of technical stuff here in the way. I'm going to move the mic closer y'all can hear me and thank you so much for joining me here today we're so glad y'all are here um, if you have any questions for me be sure to leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to get back with you right after the end of the class all right we're going to talk about the tracing here first so we make it really easy for you to begin with so I've got a traceable let's go ahead and give you a visual on this so this is part of what comes to you in the mail and um, or you can do a digital download on our website I have the links below so this is what comes to you and we have a video on doing just a, a pencil transfer or if you want to get the mailing kit you can get all the graphite paper and everything that comes with it so I have worked ahead a little bit but basically what I will do is I'll take a pencil and first let's talk about how to adhere this to the canvas so the first thing that I will do is I will adhere the graphite paper to the canvas. I always make sure that the shiny black side faces the canvas. And I just do a little tape right up here at the top. Two spots there, you can see that. And again, dull gray side faces up and then black shiny side faces down. All right, just two tapes up here and then tape up here about three there but I always leave all the sides and the bottom loose so that I can go ahead and lift up and check my work as I trace you want to make sure and get all the details um, so that you don't lose anything because once you take this off completely then it's really hard to line it back up again because you can't see that um, so again just tape up here at the top firm pressure down and then what we're going to go ahead and do is take our pencil and go ahead and just trace right over the top and so I'll do that over the top of every single line. And you can actually see that a little bit there in the monitor. Um, see how it's just all over the top. I'm going to go ahead and kind of let that reflect a little bit so you can see all the graphite there. So that will make a transfer onto the canvas. Now I'm going to go ahead and just remove this so you can see. Go ahead and take that off there. Okay. So just, there we go. All right. So now this is all done. Now I have worked ahead, and your kit also comes with a permanent marker. So it looks just like this. So every place where there was transfer, it basically looks like a light pencil drawing to begin with. I go ahead and do a permanent marker and come right in over the top. That way it bleeds through the paint, makes it a lot easier when I'm working in all of my background colors. So this to me is a lot easier for beginners to go ahead and use. So I go ahead and do a hard line over the top of everything. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my paint here. Just simple plates will do, and then I've got our little brushes. This is my little family of brushes, so I've got my mama brush, and then I have my little buddy brush, and then my little bit brush. All right, so those are all ready to go, and some napkins. I also make sure that I have a bucket of water nearby. Do a little beverage, do a little candle if you'd like. 
these come with some of our kits too. They're kind of fun. Um, yeah, just let off some steam, party a little bit. It's awesome. Celebrate learning. Yay. All right. And then, of course, our paint kits. Well, I'll give you a visual here. This is what it looks like in the package. And then we'll go ahead and grab this. This is, mine's been used just a little bit, but this is, gives you the general idea. All right, so we're going to go ahead, and I've got some, a few colors out because I use these a lot. So I have some titanium white out and some Mars black. And then we're going to go ahead and get started on our background color first. So I'm going to go ahead and use the primary cyan blue. And initially when these are brand new, there will be a little bit of a silver foil lining on top that will have to, has a little lip up there. You can peel it off. I'm going to go ahead and do a little dollop there. So that's about a nickel size dollop or actually a dime size dollop there. All right, so we have that. And then let's also go ahead and get some Viridian. All right, little pea size amount there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start with, this is my mama brush. And I can grab just a little tiny bit of water here. Let's go ahead and pick up a nice big dollop of the white. Let's start with a little touch of the primary cyan blue and a little touch of that viridian. Let's mix all that together. So it's mostly white. It's quite a bit of blue. You can keep it kind of light blue if you want. I like to add in a little bit more of that Viridian now. It takes it to a little bit of a hint of turquoise happening over there. I'm going to add some more white. A little bit more of that Viridian. Alright, that's looking really pretty. Okay, so let's get some room. And then we're going to start with like a nice big sweep of color over the top. This is another really great reason um, why we go ahead and use the permanent marker. So this will bleed through the paint. I'm going to add a little bit more water. And then we're just going to push this all the way across. Put a firm pressure. Let's grab a little bit more water, a little bit more white. And we're going to take this with some horizontal strokes, just back and forth. And you can already see how that permanent marker is just bleeding right through. That's exactly what we want. Makes this first part of the process really easy. This is just a nice wash of color. I have added a little bit of water. So it does make it just a tiny bit translucent. And again, firm pressure back and forth. You want to make sure and keep that firm pressure all the way across so that you don't have choppy brush strokes. It keeps one fluid stroke all the way across. Now let's add a little bit more white here so that that kind of goes all the way across, flows into it a little bit. A little bit of variety. Get a little turn on that so you can see it. Actually move this over just a little bit. That way you can see the palette fully. Again, we'll take this firm pressure and stroke all the way down. Forget to add just a little bit of water as you go. Makes it very fluid. Helps that paint really spread easily across the canvas. And if you do happen to have a bigger brush at home, you're always welcome to use that for these large sections of paint that you have to do. This is just the brush that actually comes with our paint kit so I always 
Try to stay consistent with that so that I know you have all the same tools that I do. We're getting a nice, beautiful, light wash of color all the way across. And hello again to everybody out there. Thank you so much for joining me. Welcome, welcome. We're so happy you're here. Hope you're having a relaxing day. And then while the paint is still a little bit wet, I'm gonna go ahead and drag a little bit more white just all the way across. done with this first layer of paint. Let's grab a little bit more water. We're starting to get a little bit of that dry brush. We want more of that fluid, easy stroke. So a little bit of water helps. And just back and forth. And now I'm just pulling in a little bit more white. Just kind of randomly throughout. All right, so we have a wonderful first layer there. And this can adjust, every time I do this painting, it's usually a little bit different every single time. Um, so it can be a little bit lighter if you want, or um, of course a little bit darker. It always changes, just kind of depends on my mood in here. And then if you do want to add some bright golden tones into the background, let's go ahead and talk about that. If you have a little bit more sunshine in your sky, let's go ahead and pick up a little bit of our primary yellow here. Just did a little pea size amount of that. Okay. Let's rinse out completely. Let's grab a little bit of that white and that yellow. And let's say we have a little bit of sunshine peeking through here. So I'm gonna do a light drag across on the side. A little bit of white, a little bit of primary yellow. Kind of lightly pull that across. A little bit of water with that too. So now we have a little bit of peekaboo with some sunshine kind of barely coming through the sky there in the background. Just light strokes with that. Rinsed out my brush. Let's talk about that a little bit too. So I've got my little bucket of water here nearby. I'm going to go ahead and do firm pressure, round and round and round, circle, circles. And then that will help release the paint from the brush. Keep checking that. Then do a slight drag on the end of the bucket and then just gently wipe off there. You can use just paper towels or a rag. Wash rag works great too. Okay. So now our next step is to go ahead and start to place in a little bit of color. I'm gonna start with all the light bright colors first. We'll save our blacks and our darkest color and our outline until the very end of the process. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's start with a little bit of some primary magenta. This is kind of like a pink color. So it's going to turn 
a little pea size amount. And let's go ahead and take our little bit brush. A little bit of white, a little bit of primary magenta. Let's go ahead and work those two together. And remember during this process, this is an easy process to do on a flat surface. I think it's easier. You don't ever have to worry about water runs. Um, also, it's easy to manipulate the canvas in terms of like just turning it to where if you're trying to get into an area and you don't want to have your elbow or your forearm rest into it, mess up anything, you can always just turn the canvas too. So that makes it really easy. All right, I'm going to go ahead and work in this cute little birdie right through here. So I'm going to just hold the brush just like a pencil. That gives me a little bit more control. Let's grab just a little bit of water. There's our primary magenta, a little bit of white. And then if your uh, brush tip gets full with paint, it can make the bristles kind of spread out. So you want to do a little taper. Sometimes you want to do a little twist into the paint, and that will get the tip of your brush back to a nice fine point. Now I don't want to lose my eye, so I'm going to go ahead and just go gently around that there. Just leave a little eye line same with my little wing here I don't want to lose that shape so I'm going to go around that I'm going to be very delicate go around that shape little tiny curves in here and then we're just going to fill in like a solid light pink kind of a hot pink actually just work that in feather those strokes it all the way out to that little point there. Don't forget about your little beak here. Get that in. And then if you feel like there's some areas there you need to feather back out with another second coat, you can. I'm also turning the brush a little bit. Really can help. Um, so you can kind of turn the brush a little bit more over to the side, just like this, parallel to the canvas. And that will allow the flat side of the brush to face the canvas. It gives you more of an opaque finish right over the top. Allows more paint to just gently rest right on top of that surface. All right, so I've left those there where I can come back in with a little bit of a lighter color. All right, now let's go ahead and get a nice layer of this same light pink right over the top of this heart. Again, a little bit of white, a little bit of primary magenta. This is the same color we just used for our cute little bird up top here. Beautiful. Okay, let's go ahead and it's out. Dry off. There we go. Okay, now let's go ahead and get a layer of some red down here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use, this is cadmium red, beautiful warm red. Let's go ahead and do a dime-sized dollop of that. And this is a bigger shape in here, so let's go ahead and grab our mama brush. Now, ideally, it would be best if you would let this set up and dry before you work into it. I'm going to go ahead and just use a really light hand so it rests right over the top. But I can go ahead and do a nice layer of this, but I don't want my 
lettering to get completely covered up. It's still bleeding through there, so I will be able to see it. And you can always add just a little bit of water right over the top, too, so it makes it a little bit more translucent. Also helps that paint really flow into the surface. But you definitely want that background to be set up and dry so that it doesn't mix with the red. So we want that red to be nice and vibrant. So let's talk about manipulating the brush here to get the best stroke. So I held it like a pencil, firm press here before I go. That way I have a nice thin line on the end of the brush. Let's do a little bit more firm pressure. Let's show that again. Now we're talking. So that's really nice and thin there on the edge. So then you can hold it. This has got a little bit of a curve to it, but it's still big enough to where we can make that corner and that curved shape and can take it all the way around and then we'll switch gears a little bit and then hold it over to the flat side of the brush and go ahead and fill into this shape A little bit of firm pressure here and I did use a little bit of water so it's a bit translucent I can still make out my letters underneath that's gonna work beautifully all right very nice all right, let's go ahead and rinse out all that paints release let's dry off all right now let's go ahead and go back in with our little bit brush and still using our cadmium red, I'm going to dip into that, do a little slight twist here into the paint, get it back down to a nice fine point, and then we'll go ahead and work into some of our little hearts in here. So I'm going to go ahead and just hold it just like I would hold a pencil. I'm helping to stabilize my hand by resting the weight of my hand on my pinky. Make sure your paint's dry in here before you do that. But it kind of acts like a little training wheel. It's great for beginners. Helps give you a nice steady hand. And then you just fill in. That helps that little brush work all the way around the shape there of that little sweetheart. And then let's do our outline. It's a little bit of water, makes it more fluid. And then we'll grab more red, working right over the top here. We've got lots of little hearts to work in. Super sweet. All right, let's go into this other one. And, you know, some of these you could almost just leave as an outline too. See, that's kind of a sweet little shape right there in the background. Doesn't have to be filled in. You could do more of these if you wanted to. It's kind of a fun effect to have that background showing through if you want. Or you can just fill it all the way in. All right, um, let's do a little mix of the primary magenta and the red. We're gonna make a cool red here. See, it's like a deep dark red. And little tiny hearts in here. Let's grab a little water, a little twist, get it back to a fine point.
And we've got one little heart, and we want the next heart nearby to be just a little bit lighter, a little bit of contrast. Do a little twist. Let's grab a little bit of water. Make it easier to flow into that little space. All right, very lovely. Let's rinse out. Now we need to go ahead and make a dark contrasting turquoise for this second bird here. So I'm gonna go back to my viridian. Let's go ahead and give a visual on that again. So we have our viridian. And then we have our primary cyan blue. And then we have our titanium white. All right, let's go back in with our little bit brush. Let's grab a little bit of this viridian, a little bit of primary cyan blue. We want this, again, to be quite a bit darker. This will be the wing and eye color. A little turn here to be able to reach into this shape. Lovely. All right, now let's do our little eye. So again, always use whatever you can to get best positioning. So for me, it's turning it closer to me. And then I'm going to go ahead and just, actually, let's get back into that water. Another really fine twist to get back to that point. Basically just trying to have a memory of that shape. I don't want to lose it. We'll probably end up redoing that over the top. I just want to make sure and keep that in place. Now I'm going to mix up a light turquoise. So basically this same, actually let's grab a little bit more viridian and more white. That is looking lovely. We just want to make a beautiful, vibrant turquoise. Now another little twist in there, and then let's go ahead and turn so we can have the best angle here to work into the shape. Come around that little curve there. Don't forget about our little beak. right back up into that little point pull back down into that curve and just be really patient with it take your time if you need to use that trick again where you kind of brace your uh, hand with your pinky of course you can always do that Come around that little eye shape very carefully. If you happen to cover it, remember you can always come back over the eye to get that shape back in there. All right, let's rinse out, dry off. Let's go into a little bit of our white 
and work on defining the little wing in here on the other sweet little bird here. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna go back over to that other angle. That was a great angle here. And so it's kind of like making a little parentheses. So there's our sweet little eye. She's got it closed for the sweet little kiss. And then we're gonna work on her little wing. See if your canvas is completely dry, of course, you can actually just rest your hand right there and you won't disturb anything. And that can really help you stabilize your hand. You just have to really make sure that it is dry and that you turn it in the right position to where you're not disturbing any wet paint. You'll be all set. All right, let's go ahead and rinse out. Okay, so let's see here. Again, saving all the black to the very end. Now we have a little bit of some green detail that we can work. And so here we go. So we've got some bright yellow green. There's that foil top that I was talking about. See how it's got a little thing you can lift up? Let's go ahead and do a little pea size amount. And then let's also grab some cadmium green. Oh, whoops. <laughs> there we go. Take that off or it won't go anywhere. You'll be struggling for a bit. So now we're ready. Another little pea size amount. All right, way to go. Okay, so now we're back to our little bit brush, nice and clean and dry. We're going to mix up the bright yellow green with the cadmium green. Work those two together. Yellow can also be quite lovely with this. We have some more left, but let's grab a little bit more of that nearby as well. Another little pea size amount, really helps brighten it up. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and work into these little beautiful leaf-like shapes. They feel a lot like a parentheses. That's an easy message for the brain to handle. So again, see how that flows like a parentheses. We do that shape all the time. It's very familiar. The little points right on top. A little curve there. Again, we have our bright yellow green, cadmium green and then our primary yellow. Pull that down. Now we did a little bit more of an upward stroke there. Start at that point, pull down, soft curve, Kind of pushing into all of those colors. A little bit of yellow, primary yellow, cadmium green, bright yellow green. As you pull down over that curve, apply a little bit of firm pressure, kind of help spread the bristles out, create some fullness in that stroke. All right, that is super lovely. Love it. Okay, let's 
go ahead and rinse out. We do have some little flowers that can pop out over the top, but I definitely want this to have some setup and dry time. So we'll wait a little bit on those. All right, so now let's go ahead and use our lovely little buddy brush here. We're going to work on some fun little clouds as much as we can with the bigger strokes, and then we'll have to switch back over to our little bit. So here we go, a little bit of white, and it's right there on the end of the brush. I'm just going to do a little push, and that little push and twist kind of spreads the bristles out. Almost like a half circle stroke there. Keep pushing those little tiny little circles, little half circles. See how that's really a fun textural cloud like shape? Again, a little push down. And feather that out a little bit. Let's go up here to the top. So a little bit of firm pressure and twist. Now this little guy is a little too small for a little buddy, so I'm going to rinse out, dry off, let's go back to a little bit, a little bit of white here, and we just need to work into this little cloud that's just kind of peeking out from behind, this little bird and the heart shape. Let's kind of feather that out a little bit by turning that brush handle just a little bit over to the side, parallel to the canvas, and that will help feather out the brush strokes. There we go, nice and solid, it's awesome. When in Rome, we have a little bit of white to do here, so I'm going to continue on with my little bit brush and the white paint, and we're going to go ahead and just do a nice little line right through there. I'm going to go ahead and continue. It'll that permanent marker will bleed through this, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of push through. It makes it easier on the hand to go ahead and keep that curve going. And if you're nervous about it, not being able to see it, you can certainly do the cut-in work. But it's just a bit more time consuming that way. But if you just apply a little bit of firm pressure... That permanent marker will bleed through. Okay, that is looking awesome. All right, now I want to have a few little accent colors on the clouds, and there's still a little bit of wetness with the paint, so it's easy to blend into. Let's go ahead and take our violet, tiny little pea size amount of that. Barely touch into that violet. And then you can go ahead and do a little push right into the white. Let's grab a little bit of white with that, actually. It's a little bit dark. And so we're just kind of doing a little bit of an echo there on that shape. 
to mix a little bit of titanium white with our violet to kind of soften it up to a little bit more of a lavender. You can leave it just white or you can add these little fun accents right over the top. And I'm going to come back in with a bit more white. Let's do a quick little wipe there. Let's just grab a little bit more white paint and softly blend that into the center. Very pretty. Just a little soft push there. Rinse out, dry off. Let's grab more pure white to kind of help softly blend back into the center. Now you can also use different accent colors too, like a really pretty color to use as a cadmium yellow. Let's go ahead and try a little bit of that for fun. Clean little bit brush. Let's go ahead and work back into that cadmium yellow and I'm going to turn this canvas just a little bit so that I have a better angle to work from. So just do a little push. And this is just a fun little accent right around the edge. Now I need to softly blend that in from the middle. So I'm going to come back in with a clean little bit more pure titanium white. And then we'll softly blend back from the middle back out to the outer edge. Very cute, fun little accent. I'm going to come back in with a little bit of white and a blended cadmium yellow and just do a slight accent here. All right, just like that. And then one more. Just a tiny little touch of this. Rinse out, dry off. All right, so let's see here. We've got a lot of our bright color work done. Getting really close to working in the dark details of the pump jack here. Um, so now, let's see. We still have our white arrow. All right, let's go back in with our titanium white, little bit brush. Let's go ahead and work in that arrow here. Holding the brush just like a pencil, again, gives you great control, and then work into this little shape here. Holding the brush more parallel to the canvas will help you work in over the top. And with the long lines, if sometimes it's a little bit easier to use our little buddies, so you can actually just Take it all the way across like this. Sometimes that's a little bit easier. That's, this is also an option. But now we're kind of back to it. It just gets a little bit too tiny. So we're going to go ahead and switch back over to our little bit.
Now, you want a thicker coat right over the top, so we're going to turn that brush handle more over to the side. So it's just a slight shift from sometimes holding it like a pencil, which is very natural, to the hand or sometimes holding it a little bit more over to the side here, parallel to the canvas. And that becomes a little bit more of an awkward hold, but that is what also gives you a more gentle hold. Looking so beautiful. I love it. Okay, um, so now we have a little bit of a fun pattern happening on our heart, which is optional. You can just leave it a, a lovely solid color, or you can work in a little bit of this pattern here. So I need some contrasting colors that are in the same color family here. So I'm going to go ahead and use my little bit brush again. And let's grab some cadmium red visual on that again right there cadmium red now let's just do some thin lines i'm going to do a little bit of an angle pull that all the way through okay. now let's do some light pink really really light pink because it needs to be quite a bit lighter than that pink. So I'm going to add a lot more white. Okay, so now we just want a little stripe. Very fun. Now the other detail we have to work in is actually going to be more with a dark black, so we're going to wait on that. Let's grab a little bit more white. We have an outline that needs to happen right around the heart. Do that little curve all the way around. Beautiful. Let's rinse out. Let's go back to our cadmium yellow, really pretty and bright, right there. Let's go ahead and push in cadmium yellow. And then we want a few of our little lines to be right here. Okay, so now we're getting down to the black, and if I happen to miss a bright, well, I can always come back and get it later. But let's go ahead and do the small parts first. So I'm using my little bit brush, and let's go ahead and work into the bottom section here around the little green leaves. Okay, a little bit of water here too to help it flow and be more fluid, easier to manipulate into those little small spots. I'm going to add just a little bit of a line and a shadow.
So I do have a little bit of water in the brush to help that move. keeps it a little bit lighter and then I use a heavier dose of black here towards the base Do a little bit of tap and always kind of come down on the plate first. You don't want an accidental big water um, either run or puddle, if you will, on top of your canvas. So seeing how much actually taps down on the plate first before you actually commit to going to the canvas really helps. Little details here. So again, still working with that little bit brush. Because nothing else quite gets into those little shapes. Quite like this little guy. Now I will say we're about to have a lot of straight lines to contend with, so I will switch over to Little Buddy as much as I can. Uh, let's, let's do that for a moment. That way we can get the big broad strokes done with a bigger brush. All right, so here we go. Here's Little Buddy. Let's go ahead and push down into the black paint. Nice firm pressure. We're gonna make sure our edge is nice and thin. That gives us a nice thin line. And then across here, this is going to really help. And then we can, of course, use the flat side of the brush to go ahead and fill into as many large areas as we can. And then we have a long line here and a long line here. Let's go ahead and work into that with the black so that we don't get lost on which part gets colored in. The line there. We'll have to probably work back in with our little bit just here in a second. Kind of refine any little areas So again, we're getting as much of the big sections that we can get done with this bigger brush. And then we'll come back in with our little bit to go ahead and fill in the details.
much this is going to work beautifully in these little areas here. Firm pressure, make sure it's nice and thin on the edge. Kind of tap, tap, tap with a little bit more water. And you'll see we still have a little bit of detail we got to work in, but we'll catch that with a little bit brush. So let's go ahead and rinse out and let's come back in with our little bit here. So we've got a little section right into here. These are really tiny little details. We have to have that smaller brush and again you just hold it like you hold a pencil. That gives you a lot more control to get into these smaller areas here. And don't forget to turn your canvas if you need to, to have better positioning. See, because like right here, this way my hand can actually just rest right on the table, help stabilize my hand as I work into this little area right in through here. And then, you know, the kit comes with a permanent marker, too. So some of these areas are a little bit um, challenging. If you have a shaky hand, a lot of people end up having that later in life. Or sometimes with too much caffeine or whatever the reason might be. But permanent markers can really come in handy for refining all of these smaller details at the very end of the process. bit just a light twist here get a fine fine point let's work on this line just a little bit okay now let's see oh I've got a little bit more up here Okay, we can also do a little bit of a crisscross action. You can leave the heart just the way it is, or if you want, you can do a fun little pattern. So I'm going to do one more little black line right in through here. It kind of echoes that heart pattern, a little line. And then we could just do a little crisscross. And then back the other way. So there's that fun pattern right there over the top. All right, so now we need to just work on our lettering. 
All right, so we're going to come in right over the top here. This is also something that you can do with your permanent marker. That sheet is absolutely allowed. Or use your little bit brush like I'm doing here and just paint right on over the top. As you come around those thicker areas, I apply a little bit more pressure with the brush. That helps those bristles kind of spread out and do a thicker stroke on that letter. And then when the letter is thinner, you want more of a twist into the paint. And then get that back out to a fine point. where your line can be a lot thinner. And also with painting, you know, if you need to let some of this set up and dry, of course you can just pause, let that happen, and then come back and do this when you know all this is dry. And then that way you don't have to be so timid and cautious around the other areas of the paint. And you can allow your hand to rest in certain areas to help stabilize your hand while you're doing this as well. All right, so we have our love you, and that's so awesome. Love you. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Now we still have a few little floral details down here at the base. So I'm still using my little bit brush, and I want to do like just a little tiny, tiny little branch that comes up. These can also be like the little lines in the leaves. Let's rinse out, dry off. And then I want a nice amount of our primary yellow to dip into. We're going to do a fun little trick here. So using the handle of the brush, the round end here, we're going to go ahead and just dip right into that primary yellow and then press down. We're going to make just a few little flowers. So just kind of tap that out.
can always come back and reinforce the dot a little bit more. We didn't quite get enough pressure on the first round. Need to accentuate a dot, works perfectly. Just come right back in with another little dollop on the end. And of course these polka dots are really fun as a pattern. You can certainly use them in many more areas than just this. To just do maybe a white polka dot pattern on the heart. There's all kinds of different creative options. All right, let's give that a little wipe. And then let's just check for any additional accents. I think we are all good on this in terms of details and we're done. And then of course, all we really have to do is just sign your masterpiece if you want here. So you can do that with a metallic marker. You have to make sure it's really dry here in this little section. So this is black, so of course you want it to be able to show up over the top. Or of course you can paint on a little signature. Hopefully this has got a little bit of, oh it does, wonderful. All right, so I'm just gonna do a quick little signature. easy. Quite a bit easier than painting it on. That's a really tiny signature. All right, so I believe we are done now. It looks beautiful. So again, uh, this is available on our website, tipsyartist.com. I have the links down below, and it comes with just a digital traceable for just less than five dollars. Um, if, if you have all your supplies already at home, or if you need the entire kit, um, with everything that I use here, then that's also on our website for just $35, and we ship it right to your house. Uh, makes it super easy. Um, again, if you have any questions, please leave those below in the comments. Happy to get with uh, you on those right after the end of the class. But just thank you again so very much for painting with me today or just hanging out with me. It's a lovely way to spend the day, very relaxing. But yeah, you'll have a beautiful rest of the day. And we will see y'all soon. Toodles.